Welcome to the lab. Today, we're going to be building a Japanese-inspired toolbox out of half-inch apple ply. With a couple tweaks of the dimensions, you can make cool gift boxes such as this to hold a bottle of wine. The only power tool needed for this build is a table saw. For this box, I'm going to be using half-inch apple ply. If you don't have apple ply, any other good quality plywood will do. I start this build by ripping a strip that is long enough to accommodate the bottom and both sides. Once I've ripped my stock, I go ahead and install a flat tooth tip table saw blade. A dado stack will work as well. Once my blade is installed, I can go ahead and set the height using a quarter inch gauge block. We are going to inset the blade the thickness of our stock. Once I'm satisfied with the placement of my blade, I can run a quick test. This board is going to become the bottom and both sides of the box. I cut my dados all at the same time so there's no discrepancy in their placements when I go to glue up. Once my dados are cut to a half inch, I can go ahead and do a quick interior sand. I switch my blade back over to a combo since the dado blade is no longer needed. Now we can cut the stock down for our two sides and bottom. For this box, I'm cutting the height of my sides at 4 inches and the bottom at 5. Now we can lay our parts out and get the dimension of the side pieces. When measuring my width, I clamp the pieces together in order to get a very accurate measurement. Once I know my measurement, I can cut the pieces to length on the table saw. Now I do a quick assembly of the sides to make sure everything is square. Here I'm cutting a piece to width that will become the end caps of the top. Once my stock is cut to width, I can go ahead and rip it down into strips. I rip my strips down to one and a half inches. Before I glue up my parts, I do a quick interior sand. We're going to assemble our box using 23 gauge nails. To make the nails look better on the surface, I go ahead and mark out where I want them placed. Once I'm done marking the nail placements, I can go ahead and add some glue in my dados and put the box together. I use a clamp to hold everything in place while I nail it together.
Once I have the bottom assembled, I go ahead and mark off the nail placements on my end caps. Lastly, I check to make sure everything has remained square. I clean the glue squeeze out using a damp paper towel. Time to measure for the lid. When measuring for the top, I only measure the opening and the depth of one of the end caps. Once I get my measurements, I can cut the top down to size. Then I test the fit of the top. A little gap on the end is good since it makes it easier to pop the lid out. Now I cut two end caps to keep the lid in place. I can hold the part in place and scribe the bottom with a pencil to get a perfect measurement. Place my lid and butt it up to one side. Once the lid is in place, I can go ahead and mark its location. I line the piece up to my pencil lines and nail it in. my combination square to make sure the piece remains square while nailing it in. I clean up the glue and pop the lid back into the box. I mark off my nail locations before I attach the next piece. In order to get a nice reveal, I use my quarter inch gauge block as a spacer. I butt the lid piece to the end cap and nail it in. For good measure, I add some additional nails on the underside of the lid. Now I'm ripping some stock down to 60 degrees for my handles. I set my width slightly larger than the stock, that way there will be a flat top above my angle. We're using this stock as a handle, so eliminating that sharp edge is important. Now I'm going to cut my angle stock down to length. This will be placed on the side and act as a handle. Once I'm satisfied with the fit of the handle, I can go ahead and mark my nail locations. A 
Again, I use a squeeze clamp to make sure this piece doesn't move while I nail it into place. There was a little glue squeeze out, so I went ahead and used a chisel to chamfer the edges to make sure my piece would sit nicely. As simple as that, a fully functional box and lid. I filled all my nail holes using some Timbermate wood filler. This wood filler really is awesome. It makes the holes virtually disappear. I let the wood filler sit for half an hour, then sand it flush. I use 220 since the wood is fairly smooth to begin with. The last step of the build is chamfering the edges on the top with a little hand plane. For this box I'm using feed and wax as my finish. This finish is super easy. All you have to do is wipe on, wait about 15 minutes, and wipe off. The only downside is it doesn't offer a lot of protection. Once I've given the wax the appropriate amount of time to soak in, I go ahead and wipe off the excess. And there it is, a super easy box using only the table saw. You can also add a strip of wood at the end to make the box lock. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time in the lab.